Jay here from Full Time Devils. Joining me for a chat today is James Cooper from Sky. James, thanks for, for joining us. It's a bit role reversal, isn't it? Because you've spoken to us at Full Time Devils quite a few times and, and we appreciate the support you've given the channel as well. Um, I suppose there's only one sort of place to start really today. This morning, there was all these sort of frenzied um, Harland rumours and stories that he was on his way and this was happening and, and Ollie's sort of poured a bit of cold water on this because you've spoken to Ollie today. Yeah, it was he's... interesting. I, I mean, his body language was a bit strange. I thought he th it was almost hijacked, which is a strange word to use when you're talking about people arriving on planes, but yeah. I think he was. Um, bearing in mind, I think we did an interview with him before the press conference and then I got a text saying he's on a plane from Stavanger into Manchester and uh, suddenly he gets asked that. Um, it's a funny one because I asked him about Harland and said, have you spoken to him? And he sort of gave a quite round the houses sort of answer and said, look, I have spoke to him, but that was when he was a player and uh, he was trying to cover all bases. But I thought with his body language, he looked fairly relaxed with the whole thing. I mean, look, he's got a player there. He knows he gave him a debut when he was 16. He played for him for, for 18 months. Uh, if that doesn't give you an advantage over everybody else, if you're talking about a buyout clause, maybe being 20 million and then Manchester United being able to match anybody's wages in the world and walking into a first team potentially, you know, I, I, I think Manchester United are probably probably front runners, but then you, you throw him Mino Raiola into that. And that makes life a little bit more difficult. You know, it, people then suggest, well, maybe the whole thing's tied up with Pogba, and if you let Pogba leave, maybe it becomes more easy to get Haaland in. So I, I, don't, I don't think it's an easy deal as that. I think, yeah, I think Oli's pretty relaxed about it. I think he knows he's got firepower if he needs it, and I think he knows that perhaps Haaland wants to come as well. But actually getting the deal over the line is probably not that easy. And I think, certainly from the people I've talked to this morning, it looks as though he is over here for Christmas to spend time with some family, and that, you know Manchester United would be sensible just taking their time, having the chat when they need to. But I think that there's already been chats, there's already been dialogue, and certainly it's kind of a my understanding that Ollie and Ed Woodward were over in Salzburg last Friday, and I think there was contact between the two parties. And uh, you know he's spoken to a lot of other clubs as well, so I think Manchester United are very much in the mix. So that's it, that he's nailed on, he's definitely coming. I'm not saying that, <laughs> no, you know, no. and having just played against my sons at FIFA and played at Salzburg, he was all right, he had some good Oh, well, there you go, that's, that's, that's what you do, sort of isn't it? That's what everyone yeah, does. Listen. How good is he on FIFA, you know? <laughs> um, I mean, it is a move that would make sense. You've listed the re reasons there. There was also talk of maybe if a deal could be done, it would be one where he was signed in January but came in the summer. Is that yeah, something I, you I think I can certainly happen? see the wisdom in that. Yeah. You know, I, it wouldn't rock the boat too much. Um, you know, the, the thing that we're relying on at the moment, I guess, for Manchester United is not having any injuries. You know, Marcus Rashford's playing game upon game upon game, and he loves doing that. He told me a couple of weeks ago, he's not like other players who want to break. He just wants to play every game that he possibly can, no matter what the competition, whether it's for club, for country. He, he gets stronger doing that. I'm not sure that's the same case for Anthony Martial, who you don't know whether you're going to get hot and cold game on game. Uh, and likewise with, with Mason Greenwood, I'm not sure you can afford to play him no. you know, game on game. So I think there's arguments both ways. If it means getting a deal because Salzburg are more happy that he goes back on loan, then great, do the deal. Um, if it allows you to get a player in who you can play for a season or half a season, where it maybe doesn't matter too much, I, I can see arguments both ways. But I think the most important thing is to get someone in and when it's someone that the whole of European football is trying to get, it's a big statement if Manchester United can say, He's ours. Do you think this shows that the, the board are sort of... I know we don't know if he's going to happen, <laughs> but the fact that there is a conversation going on, do you think this shows that the board are behind Oli? Because we've, we mean you spoke before, asked about, you know, there was all these Pochettino rumours and that if Oli, you know, has was almost two games away from the sack. But this, to me, seems like they're looking at Oli as a little bit more long-term. Yeah, I mean, there's two things in that. And someone did say to me this morning, if he gets the player, then that really is a tick in the column that says, look, he's here for the long-term. Mm -hmm. And I can see that completely. Um, I've known Oli for an awful long time as a, as a player and a manager. In, in my regard, he's never been worried about not being Manchester United manager. He really hasn't been. He does treat kind of winning and losing and drawing almost the same. You don't see him, you know, massively celebrating if United go and do something. Yeah, there's a bit of fist bumping and like a, a, the, uh, the Etihad Stadium went over to the fans. But he doesn't go crazy. He's not like mm. Duncan Ferguson or Jurgen Klopp. In the same way, he doesn't go overboard when things go badly. So I, I, I think you're right. I think it, it's, it will be a big tick in his column. But I think also speaking to the powers that be, they're happy, they want some long-termism, they want some stability, and they feel as though they're building a structure within the first team setting, but also across the club, which sees Manchester United going forward. So he's a key part of that. But I think, again, you bring in someone like Haaland, you make that kind of message clear to the rest of Europe that you want to be a force. But it's also saying that, you know, it's Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's judgment. He said, look, I know him as a youngster, I gave him his debut, and uh, I think we should have him. So there's a lot tied up in it. Um, do you think... I mean, I know, it's, you know it's, you can only sort of 
say what you think here, it's not nothing set in stone, but do you, do you expect much business from Manchester United this, this January? Because we're here in Harland, you know, there's, there's talk that maybe Nemanja Matic might go or one of the senior players who isn't getting much game time. Do you think they're going to do much business in the January? I, I'd, I'd love to say yes, because it yeah. would make probably my life in January a lot easier. Yeah. <clears throat> Bearing in mind the transfer window is such a huge thing. But historically, you look at it at Manchester United and no manager's gone big in January. I think the biggest, arguably, was um, when... Sanchez was he? Yeah, maybe. No, it I didn't suppose, pan out well. I, I, but I suppose Vidic and Evra. No, going sorry, all yeah, well, the way back. To, yeah, you know, no, you're I mean, right. Yeah, I almost shows, forgot they were January transfer And that, and that kind of shows fans. you, you know, that how, how there isn't that. I mean, Matter coming in with, um, yeah, with Moyes. Wasn't Moyes, it? yeah, <clears> it was, <throat> I think it was too little, too late by that time. You know, so yeah. they, there is a willingness to do it, but I don't think you can see wholesale changes. And I think um, I thought Matic the other day. I know he was against Colchester. I, I thought certainly for an hour or so he looked okay. Yeah. Um, and, and certainly I thought his distribution with the ball was better than maybe his movement around the pitch. Um, so I think it comes down to some, some thorny subjects and, and clearly Pogba is the, is the key one within that. I think, <laughs> I think, anyway, we've done well I, actually. We've got, <laughs> we've got five minutes in at this, whatever it is, without mentioning. I um, said that the same thing to Ollie this morning because yeah. he, he mentioned it before I did, which was a record in an interview with Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer <laughs> because normally it's the first thing you want to talk to him about. Yeah. Um, with Pogba, is there any indication that what's happening there? Do you think, do you think we'll see Paul Pogba um, in February playing for Manchester United, for example? I, I said to Ollie this morning, you know, will he play for Manchester United in 2019, as he's been saying week on week on week? Uh, he was less sure about that. I said, will he still be here after January? He said he would be. And you've got to take a manager at his word. But I think there's also some kind of other problems linked within that. You know, Manchester United want between 100, maybe 150 million for Paul Pogba. This is a guy that's not played for 12 weeks. Yeah. You know, they're talking about almost doubling their money about what they paid uh, when they brought him for a club record fee. And, there's no one in world football going to pay that sort of money for him. No. Because at the moment, you wouldn't say he'd improve anybody because you, know, you haven't seen a world-class player consistently at Manchester United. Then you add his wages on top of that and he'll want to do better wages wise than he is at Manchester United at the moment. And again, I don't see, even the likes of Real Madrid, which you get kind of mentioned all the time, they, they haven't got more money than God. Not no. anymore. And they've spent a lot, didn't they, in the summer and some of it's not quite worked out. So, it, you know, so Manchester United might, might be stuck with them. I, th I think the problem is if they do get rid of him and, it, and someone does come in with the sort of money that makes them kind of twist rather than stick then I think there's a real responsibility on replacing him you know I, I think that sends out a really poor message if you say right you're linchpin the guy that's got 29 million Instagram followers which is probably the biggest claim he has at Manchester United at the moment you, 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 you allow right that there. to leave that, that message isn't right you know uh, you should about leave, let the, the, those players leave in a position of strength knowing you've got people to come in so I think I don't see much activity whatsoever there might be a couple of loans because uh, injuries are coming back you know the likes of Chong and Gomez, I mean, they're in contract talks at the moment and Oli this morning said they'd like him to stay. I think they probably need some football somewhere else. Yeah. You know, toughen them up a little bit because I've seen nothing, certainly in their first team bits, that's kind of said, right, they're, they're, they're real hot prospects of the future. Not in the same way as you've seen Brandon Williams or Scott McTominay or Mason Greenwood. Yeah. It's I've, a different I've, development. Yeah, I agree. To a certain extent, I do like Gomez. I do, I, but with Chong... I'm, I'm sort of I'm, I think he's flat to deceive a little bit I think the hype it's not his fault I've always said this it's not a, a youngster's fault if he gets a lot of hype but I don't think he's lived up to that in my opinion no I don't, I don't think he has either I think Gomez has got quick feet yeah. um, probably isn't perhaps big enough um, to do the job that Manchester United would want him to do um, but I would suggest both of them are probably worth taking a punt on for another deal um, but not being hung out to dry over it you know and just finally on Pogba, I won't want to stick on that, but do you think him and Ollie have a good relationship from what you gather? Yeah, think? I think because so. Because it seems to be a good fit, that, for me, because obviously the problem with Jose, Ollie comes in, he's not Jose for a starters, and he, you know, he knows the clue. Well, I think players. that's a key thing. I yeah. think you know, not being Jose is a clear thing, and I think you know, when people look at the kind of trigger to how United are playing at the moment, I think it was that, that Spurs dugout, and I think I joked with somebody at United and said that when they went to the Etihad after beating Spurs, they should try and get Pep to wear a Jose mask as well, <laughs> just to try and get another response. Because I think it was all down to that. You know, that extra motivation. I think Manchester United fans should send a big Christmas card to Jose to say thank you very much for <laughs> yeah. giving that. Good luck with that. But, I know, but, <laughs> but no, yeah, but, I, but I, I do think he was from. a key part of that. Yeah. You know, uh, and in terms of the relationship, I think it is good. Um, I think they've known each other an awful long time. Mm. I know that Ollie rates him, and I think Ollie also understands that, you know, talent-wise, you know, it's hard to make a case that there's a more talented person consistently in his squad I don't, it's hard I mean I think Marcus Rashford at the moment is world class I really do no I agree um, uh, but you don't, you don't know how long the on tap's going to be on for based in, bearing in mind and I know he's young but we haven't seen these long spells of him being kind of magnificent like he is at I the moment I think this is the longest one and Correct. I'm a massive Marcus Rashford you know, fan and, 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 and long may it continue but, but you know Paul Pogba the, the biggest frustration when he finally does leave Manchester United is I don't think you've ever seen the player that you've signed I and think it, yeah yeah I sort of agree with that um, I think the problem for me is 
if you'd have said to me sort of three was it three years ago when he signed yeah. in three years time or four years time when he does leave we're going to have won the Europa League the, the League Cup um, and, and a community shield and a community <laughs> shield yeah Jose <laughs> yeah. and, and finish fingers. a distant second to Manchester City and I've been disappointed I always felt with Jose and with Paul Pogba they wouldn't stick around forever I thought we would probably get three or four years out of both of them but we'd win a title during that time and it, you know obviously we're not going to win a title this season so the likelihood is he's going to leave without winning a title and that's the real disappointment and I think me. it's also hard and frustrating I mean you ask Manchester United fans have you ever seen him play well for 90 minutes no it's more because he, as soon as he said that I'm going I'm about to come in with City away it, but, then, but then it's a half it's yeah. a half it's yeah, an amazing half yeah. but, but still score, Chris Smalling scores the winner yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, and I don't yeah. want to take it when he had blue hair that day of course oh, that was but, you know, t- so. he scored with a bit of blue hair as well <laughs> when it was quite ironic so, uh, that, that, that isn't me being a Pogba hater I think there's a magnificent player in there I, I really was excited when he came to Manchester no, United I agree. but I think it, you'd be hard pressed to say he's been more successful than Angel Di Maria it's a similar sort of thing I was jumping when Di Maria yeah. came to the door I thought that was an amazing signing and not, or both of them are kind of flattered to deceive. This problem we have with, and we have it on this channel all the time, is he's very, very divisive, Paul Popper. And it's not like you can sort of be quite diplomatic or just <laughs> balance like you're being and say, you know, he's a great player, probably not seeing the best of him. People tend to get like, you either pop breath scene, you love him, no, I understand and you get that, like I... to the point he's terrible. And I think there's, you know, there's been some great performances there has in terms of helping us win some trophies and, and, and sort of some of the results we've had and some of the, the things that he does on a football pitch that other players can't do. But on the whole, as I said earlier, I just think, you know, I was hoping for a lot more from both him and Manchester United as well, yeah, not just I, him. I, I just think you want that player to boss a game. Yeah. And, and he's never done that. And, and, and trouble is, some players aren't capable of doing that. And you sort of say, well, fair enough that they can't do that. You know that he can. You know that he could go and absolutely dominate a game and do what he wants to do. And you're just wondering what, what it is that hasn't kind of clicked he's um, missed some big games as well. I don't mean not being there but also he's just not you know I mean he missed Paris he wasn't there yeah. he's suspended he's missed a few I think he's missed three games against Liverpool since he's been here which you know these are the play, these are the games I want to see him in absolutely and they're yeah. the games where you expect him to shine as well um, and I'd love to think that Oli could get a tune out of him but I, I, I just don't see that being kind of a happy ending you know and, uh, and I think pretty brutally this year the one good thing about him being out for the last 12 weeks since September is, is Scott McTominay yeah he's been fantastic you know I mean I just think he's he's stepped up. I think he's a he's a great bloke. Um, I think he's becoming a better player, and I think that's coming from the belief and the confidence around him. And I, I also like seeing Fred looking like a five million player rather than a five hundred thousand. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I listen. I've apologised to Fred because I wasn't too harsh, but I was a little bit like, really, we paid fifty odd million, whatever it is, for this guy. Um, I thought there was glimpses there, but I didn't have a lot of belief. If I'm being brutally honest, I'm going to be honest, I didn't. But I think over the he's played is it 11 games on yeah, the spin, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I know he didn't play in the cup, but um, he played 11 on the spin. I think whatever 90 minutes as well, and he steps up. I thought Liverpool was a game where I thought, I'm going to minute maybe this, this, this there's something there. And obviously City was. No, I, I just think he's, he's, he's come confident, and you want to see a player like that. I think smiling. I think he's found it difficult in transition behind the scenes I don't think it's been the easiest sort of time to develop into what he's doing I don't think coming from Shakhtar is perhaps the easiest I've, I'd quibble about the fee I don't think you can pay 50 million for someone who makes me look big you know I, I, tower, I tower above him and I'm not, I'm not yeah, big at all you always forget how small he is sometimes don't you, you know, like, but, yeah. but you want to see someone enjoying their football and I think he is now and I think McTominay's allowed him to do that I'm not, I'm not suggesting that he is a starter for Manchester United because I don't think there's any evidence here that your strongest side contains Fred at the moment but certainly he's an option yeah. and, 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 and the fact he's kind of making an argument of it shows his progress I think as well we have to give him credit because like you were saying it's not the easiest move and Jose was seen a bit lukewarm with him when he arrived I remember. But how, how bad is that though? Yeah I mean he's got I remember Juventus at home we won no down we were terrible and Fred sat on the bench he didn't even bring him on I know and it took a long time to recover from things like that and I yeah. think when things aren't going well I don't think it's the easiest place to be maybe No no I agree just on that sort of subject and I think you'll know what I mean here, you know, because I've briefly covered United myself as a journalist and when you get to the club and you're around the club a lot, as you, as you are, obviously, what do you sort of make of the atmosphere in the club? I don't mean in the stands, I'm not meaning in the stadium. Do you think it is sort of, for want of a better word, a happy camp at the minute? Do you think it seems I, I think, settled? I think generally or... it's good. I think, I think what I worry about, it's the same with, with, I guess, Manchester United fans, and I know a lot of them, they, you know, I speak to them a lot of the time. At the moment, your existence is game by game. <laughs> yeah. It's a really strange thing though, isn't it? You yeah. know, when, when you've covered a club for as long as I have, you know, for all those years, those 13 Premier League titles, it was wow, bang, 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 bang. And there was this kind of disbelief, this machine-like thing at the moment. It doesn't take very much for it to kind of just sort of, not be derailed, but confidence at Manchester United is still a, quite a fragile thing. There's not a sense of belief or momentum at the moment. And I think it's, 
it's getting better. Yeah. I think um, having the likes of Marcus Rashford, I think, you know, he's, he's one for the future in terms of leadership credentials within the kind of group of people. Yeah. And I, and I think he understands that and the people around him he's understand doing, that too. I know this might sound a bit strange thing to say, but he's doing the right things off the pitch as well. We've seen it, you know, over Christmas, his homeless thing, homelessness campaign. And, 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 and just you know, brilliant. Just, just things that you want to see as, as a, from a player, from a no, I mean, we, player. We spoke, like we spoke to him for about a half an hour about it. And, yeah. and there was a real thought to what he was saying. And there always is, I've got to say, you know, no matter if that's now or the fact he's being kind of handled, if you like, by different people. He's always tried to give an answer where he's thought about what he's saying. But I think no. there is a feeling that it's not all about now. It's kind of building something where maybe in five years' time he becomes a captain of your football club because I think that's certainly the plan. It's an amazing sort of. This sounds crazy to say again, but it's a, it's a strange turnaround because in the summer he was getting a lot of stick. We know what went on on social media and other <laughs> things, and even for what he was wearing, there was a picture of him with a hat and a chain on that people were losing their minds over bizarrely. Um, and I know obviously a lot of it boils down to what you're doing on the football pitch, but he has sort of turned even any of his detractors around now seem to be sort of praising him for both on the field and off the pitch. Which is, it's, it's credit to him because he's not had it as easy as, as no, some people I, I think. No, I think he's, he's probably looked at someone like Raheem Sterling and thought, blimey, he's done an amazing job turning his kind of PR around. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he's, he's maybe come from a, a lot longer, further back than the Marcus Rashford needed to. Yeah. Um, I, I think the, the homeless campaign um, is, is a really good campaign because it's based in truth and fact. He's been doing that as a family. You know, ever since he can remember, they've gone to houses and given people Christmas presents. That's, that's you know, so it's not, not something that's been kind of cooked up just for this Christmas, thinking, well, we need to get a bit of PR. No, people believe in it. it. Yeah, you can you know, tell that uh, as well. And, and, and I'm, you know, I, I would quibble about whether it needs to be a sort of, you know, department store that everyone knows the name of. You know, um, <laughs> right, yeah, and it's like odd being in there talking about homelessness when you've got coats that are, you know, got six hundred pounds up yeah, upwards. No, yeah. But it's also a, a shop window, window, sorry, metaphorically and literally, which I think has, has given him a chance to sort of say, this is what I'm about as a person. And I, I was quite impressed with him because I, you know doing what we do you, you do get quite cynical about things you think yeah. I'm going to tip up for this interview and it's just going to be a complete load of hollow stuff and, and there wasn't there, were, there was kind of warmth there was an understanding uh, and, and to be honest quite moving him talking about growing up at Manchester United getting the bus into the middle of Manchester and walking past all these homeless people and you know you know and I know we walk in, work in the city yeah. and it's a disgusting number of people no, you, couldn't agree you, know, you, you can't miss it no, I, yeah I was a reporter who covered that sort of thing for years and yeah it's a shame and it's great to see not just what he's doing but it's having a, it's getting the conversation going with people that wouldn't yeah. normally have that conversation, especially some of the younger people who are now sort of talking about it and doing things about it. You've seen all the tweets, you've seen what's going on social media, people and he's helping that. He's saying, you know, he's donated one of our presenters did something, Steve Housen did a, a podcast, he did Marcus Rashford donated a shirt for that. So he's supporting people and it's sort of building something. And I, and I just hope that continues, you know, um and on the pitch I just think as I said, he used the word mag magnificent and you don't use that very often and I think he's fabulous at the moment. He do, he's doing the unpredictable stuff. I was slightly annoyed the other night against Colchester. He has two chances where he's set clear, first with a heavy touch, the second with a flashing at a volley. Where I, I kind first of first half, yeah, I was a bit like, maybe oh. he thought he was offside, but still put yeah. the ball in the back yeah. of the net because you know how it works, Marcus. But you know, in the second half, he just seemed to be bored with it. He just thought, right, I'm going to get this sorted. It's still yeah. take one goal to beat these. And he just yeah. there was a bit of venom in that shot. One that finish well, it was, where it was a bit that, like, it was just the way like that Martial was. It was a five a side goal almost. Yeah. Martial was in a better spot. He thought, I'm not even going to leave this, <laughs> this to chance. Is... It's going to go in the back of the net and let yeah. we're into the semi finals. It's good to see, him, like you say, you can tell he's someone that wants to play um, and, 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 and getting all bigger the all the time as well in stature. You know, the, the frame is starting yeah. to become kind of Ronaldo esque. I don't want to compare the two because I think that's a little people have this week in the last couple of weeks, different players altogether. But yeah. in terms of growing into their Bodies. Well, you've seen him like shrugging off defenders as well. So he's, he's looking there's strong. There's a famous you know. pitch with Van Dijk and yeah, Matip, yeah. and he's he's done it with a few others as well. He's not one who can get shrugged off the ball easily. But, but touch wood, he just needs to avoid being injured. He's not. He's never really had a problem with injuries. But but the problem is playing all these games, playing bang 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 bang, yeah. and getting the kind of treatment that he's, he gets. He gets. You know. You, you mentioned something about Marcus Rashford. You mentioned about leadership, and I'm just sort of. Curious as to what you th where you think United stand with leaders in the dressing room because <laughs> you know you mentioned Emmanuel Matic earlier as well. He was someone that when he first arrived at United, I thought he was a leader. If you watched him, he was telling people what to do. It didn't really pan out that way. Ashley Young, I think, is still the club captain. Yeah, he is. he's he's you know on the fringes of the team. Do you think there is a lack of leaders there, or do you think th th there are some players maybe Harry Maguire who can step into that? I it's, it's hard. I mean, I, I, just to broaden it out and then yeah, try yeah. and answer your question, I don't think there are many leaders in football at the moment. I think, I, got, yeah, I think it's a different fair, generational man. type thing, and I think we maybe attach more importance to it than, than there actually is. Having said that, you know, the Manchester United captain is a is an honour. 
Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a proper role. Uh, and, and at the moment, I, Harry Maguire, I think they're trying to make into a leader. I don't, I, from my dealings with him, I don't see many leadership credentials. No, um, I've got to say, I think it's been a solid start for him. I, there's never been, for me, a wow moment yet. Um, no, I think that's a fair comment. I mean, before the City game, people were questioning it. People were saying, I saw it growing a little bit more. People, you know, and it can't. No, it's not his fault again, like you said earlier on with Fred. It's not his fault for the price tag. It's not Maguire's fault. He cost no. 80 odd million or whatever. But people are going to pivot to that and go, this is an 80 million pound defender, really. But I, th I think you can see why United wanted him and I think yeah, he's uh, getting there. I, I would hope in the summer that, that maybe they bring in a centre back of, of equal worth and ability and, and, we, and we see the kind of real Harry Maguire. Mm. You know, because at the moment, uh, as I say, solid. You, if, you, if it was like, you know, a, a Christmas report that our kids are getting, you'd probably say sort of six to seven out of ten. My kids he, get that he, report, I'll be happy. So. <laughs> he started well. Um, yeah. But, but leaders-wise, I mean, for me, my instincts, are, you know, I'm, without making this the Scott McTominay show, I, w I would make him captain tomorrow. I, th I, yeah. think, I think he's that I don't good. think many people, would, not too many people would argue with that, to be fair, now. You know, he's, he's middle of the park, he sees the game, he's intelligent, switched on, he's passionate about your football club, completely passionate. Was it Chelsea away when he was shouting at everyone? Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's great. And, and I said that to him after that. That said everything about where he feels he is within the dressing room, yeah. that he can do that, because there's some big characters in that dressing room. Yeah, um, but but he, he does more than just fight fires now. He puts United on the front foot. I think his distribution, again, has, has improved. Um, and, and there are other many candidates for that. You're right, Ashley Young is a loud presence in quite a quiet dressing room. Yeah. And obviously the, the, the sort of problem with Ashley Young is he barely plays yeah. and he's not one of your leaders on the pitch it's necessarily in terms of performances, um, but he's, you know, he's experience and, and, and things like that. But yeah, I was looking at it and I was just thinking there's not lots of candidates. So there said. aren't, and I, and I guess the, the one, one thing that's standing against uh, Scott McTominay is probably his age at the moment, you know. Yeah. Um, but if there's a plan for maybe Marcus Rashford to be captain down the line, then maybe there should be for, for someone like Scott McTominay because I think it would be a reward for a, for a season where he's progressed Certainly better than I thought he would. No, exactly. It's just something you said there. You said about about Harry Maguire maybe getting someone alongside him. What have you made of like, like the partnership with him and Lindelof then? Because I, I've, no one agreed with me, but I thought Lindelof was either our best player last season. I thought over the course of a season, I've had pellets for this, but everyone was like, what? But this season, he's just not really got going. I thought he had a good game in the Etihad, but I think that, that, that partnership hasn't shone like no, a No, it's, it's a funny one. I mean, I guess traditionally you like centre backs to be. Good at defending, you know. <laughs> that's that's a crazy notion, not, but, no, but it may but, just work. But, but also being brave as well. Yeah. And, I, and I don't see a lot of bravery in what in, in what he does. Yeah. Um, I can see that he he sees things. I can see that he's he's quick across the turf, um, but he doesn't do enough physically for me to, to think that's what United centre back should be all about. Yeah. Um, maybe you get away with it a bit more because um, Harry Maguire is more physical. Um, but for me, you know, Lindelof would be third choice with someone else in, 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 in front of him. That's, that's where I'd see it. Yeah. But I'm not sure who that someone is. I mean, uh, it's a shame because, you know, there's, there's defenders, I like Arlo very bad, but he doesn't have a fit. No. You know? And I think if he was fully fit, he would be a, a first team I, I, player. I just don't think he gets, gets over what happened in Paris. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a, yeah, that's a that's long a way point. back for him yeah, to come back. I almost it, forgot about you that. You know, the yeah. performance and the, and, the, and the way he kind of just sort of threw his cards in. Yeah. Um, you know, a manager's got to be pretty forgiving to to give him a second chance on that. You know, equally, Rojo's done a great job of surviving and still being at your football club. Amazing. He's a fan favourite, Marcus I mean, Rojo. We just, love him. Just honestly. Just, just stay power. Yeah, he has, I mean... It's was, like the new yeah. David May. <laughs> He's just, he was meant of, I think I was sat here actually on, on transfer deadline day saying how he was going to Everton and it was like, um, it, it looked like it was a done deal, he's, he's come back. I mean, he's great box office, Marcus Rojo. He we love, is. love watching him. I don't know if you can rely on him over the course of a season, if he's got that in him. Um, again, injuries don't help as but, well. But I think they are going to have to bring in a centre-back. I mean, I, I would love it for, to work for, for Chris Smalling and certainly he's playing well in Serie A. Um, what I'm led to believe is that United would like him back and maybe he's thinking about other things at the moment but mm. again I don't see him as being the starter alongside Maguire either I know I know people ask sorry to interrupt you people ask because we're talking about centre-backs and I know all the comments will be like Axel and Zabe do you think there's long term that's I really I really hope so because yeah. I, I, I think and I'm, I almost apologise for not mentioning him as a you know as a potential leader as well yeah. um, you know almost escaped my mind there I blame it on the cold I've got um, <laughs> but I think I think he's good um, I'd like to have seen him play more yeah. I, I, I don't understand why he's not being given 
similar sort of treatment to, to Mason Greenwood in the sense that he's only played three or four yeah, games. Yeah, I think season. he got. A, did he get an injury before? He did. Yeah, before was it? I can't remember which game it was. It might have been Arsenal. No, no, I played against Arsenal. Sorry, um, <coughs> I can't remember one of the games he got. He picked up a knock, which I think put him back a few. But few I like weeks. him. You know, again, he's he's wise beyond his years. Um, and, I, and I think if you looked at a situation maybe next season where you had Maguire as your linchpin centre half, you brought in a centre half, uh, arguably perhaps Smalling comes back. And that you've got Lindelof. That's not a bad four. And mm. Twanzebe may be the fifth. Yeah. Um, and the trouble being, I don't, I don't, the money will only stretch so many ways. And you probably need a, a striker. You need a, yeah. a creative midfielder. There's even a, an argument you might need a left back as well. Yeah, I mean, just touching on that, you mentioned Brandon Williams. Been impressed with him. I mean, he's another one who the fans love straight away. He's played. Yeah. He's come into the team. You know, come through the academy, local lad. Get stuck in. Well, that, that, I mean, confidence the, the, in abundance. It it's completely. Great to see. You know, I mean, I, I think that. That goal he scored uh, at Bramall Lane will go down as being an important goal for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. You Good know, uh, um, and, and and people kind of forget that that at three 0 down, Manchester United were totally dead in the water. We, yes. it was the worst performance I think we'd seen under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Sorry, yeah, it was two 0 two, yeah, sorry, two 0 down, yeah, and then he, we got to three. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and I, and I just think that that moment showed that there was some still some belief, there was still something there. You know, no, and, and arguably you should have won the game, like you should against Villa, and oh, yeah. you know you're in positions where you are, were going to win the game and you didn't. But I think that moment was was key to Ollie being manager as, as we're sat here right now, because um, that be his Matt Robbins moment. Well, well maybe. <laughs> no, I, 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 I love it if it is. If we're talking about, about it like that, I, I talked to David, David De Gea about it because he took the throw that led to the goal, which right. a bit, And I said, "Have you ever done that before?" <laughs> and he and he never he'd never done that before, never taken a throw in before. Have you seen that before from a keeper? No, not a Manchester United keeper. No, I, I can't remember no. seeing that but, ever. But what, it, but what it allowed was, because it was that, that side of the pitch, William should have taken the throw, but he's further up the pitch. So the hair yeah. takes, the ball gets up the pitch, but Brandon Williams is there and he puts yeah. in the back of the net. I was impressed with Williams as well, because I don't think he, for him he was having the greatest game. No. But he didn't go missing. He's like, he's that he, confidence. He's, he's, he's gutsy. Yeah. And, I, and he's lucky as well, because uh, honestly, the first two or three performances, he could have had two red cards easily. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, that, there was know, one that, VAR. We went to VAR, and I thought, "Oh God, this is it." And the, and the yeah. one he put the guy in the second row of the stands was it? Was it Chelsea? I don't... <laughs> yeah, Chelsea. Yeah, and was just it Hudson Odoi. I can't remember it was. Good actually. grief! Yeah, yeah. And, and it's not. The, the ball's nowhere near it. By the way, he's <laughs> giving him another belly button. <laughs> he's taking no prisoners. I don't know if he's a leader, but he's someone that can get I stuck know, but, in. But I think it shows what Manchester United fans are crying out for, and it is players with character and players with fight. And it shows yeah. him how maybe standards are dipped a little, or that someone like that stands out like that for those attributes. Yeah, uh, he deserves to be on the way he plays. It's, there's sort of similarities in a way under like Moyes with Raphael yeah. you know Raphael used to do things like that and because we were I think we were like 8th or ninth in the league which Sores at the time was unheard of you'd get really you'd sort of get the crowd going no, it's true. Like, yeah, oh, and it's a similar thing as you yeah. say you know, people should say yeah, Manchester United to me that Raphael should be booked in the tunnel just to <laughs> save time before the game and, and yeah. put Brandon Williams as a case yeah. for that as well yeah I think you're right I think yeah, he's, he's got that about him but you don't want to see, yes it needs to be tempered but you don't want to see him lose too much of that deal because he's no like, but, but I think if you about. looked at the successes of this season so far you'd say there were, it was Williams McTominay Greenwood and, uh, and Rashford of course and probably and they're all academy so that sounds great and it makes Manchester United fans feel really warm about themselves but you'd probably also throw in Dan James as well yeah I was going to say you've been impressed with him so yeah. far I'll take it uh, just the, the stick he takes and still gets up <laughs> he's, uh, yeah he's, 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 every game he's getting kicked pillar to post you know. and there was a couple of games on the way he got booked for diving I thought felt was harsh as well but he's sort of um, he's, he's carried on I think it's hard when you're, when you're moving at that speed and you know that people are trying to get you yeah um, I mean I, they, look, they look bad yeah. They really look bad, yeah. uh, but like, you can understand why they happen because you know people are going at him every time. And I think certainly again in this, the early days of this season, uh, when there wasn't much to kind of cheer about for Manchester United fans, he gave you two or three moments where you thought, "Blimey!" And I thought, and, mm. and Ollie was beholden to him as well. And you know the plan wasn't for him to play as much football this season as he is, but I think you know at, at, from outside of the academy quartet that I mentioned. I think he's been a real success story. And that and, and Wan Bissaka and and uh, Maguire have been solid too. Um, but I think of the three brought in in the summer, he's been the real success story. I'd agree. And the fact that he was, what, 15 million or whatever. What a snip. It's yeah. just brilliant. I mean, it's unheard of that. There's more yeah, and he's, he's like the roadrunner as well. You know, yeah. he's, he's incre- the, the one problem I think United do have with him is he goes more quickly than everybody else. Yeah. He gets himself <laughs> in the situations where... No, everyone's, he, he, everyone's been having a joke like Martial yeah, and Rashford. And it's like, they're not lazy. They just can't... Even Rashford, who's rapid, and Martial's not exactly slow. 
it's it's difficult. That's the to way I played him. football. I, I, I was a roadrunner like that, but, but I had no end product. I struggled to keep up with him. Not just watching him, let alone. No, they needed for me. They needed those Forrest Gump signs <laughs> saying stop because they didn't want me crossing the ball either. Because no end product. <laughs> and just before we wrap up, James, I just wanted to ask you as well about the sort of coaching setup at United. We've got obviously, you know, you've got um, Michael Carrick, you've got Mike mm. Feeling, you've got Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you've got Kieran McKenna, who's been yeah. there for about four years now. Matt Dempsey was at the club yeah. years ago and came back. Do you think that works on a whole? Do you think having a sort of, for want of a better expression, old boys network from United is, is the right way? Or do you think sometimes, because I look at it and I think, would it be a good idea to have someone who's not from United yeah, yeah. coming in like Carlos Queiroz did, like Steve McLaren did? Or just, Rennie Millenstein. Rennie yeah. Millenstein, just someone to come in, I'm not saying get rid of someone, but to add to that coaching staff who can look at things a little bit more objectively perhaps with some of the think, players. I think, yeah, you're almost reading my mind. I, th- I, I, th- I think the structure is, is one where... It's difficult. I think the modern player is a very different thing to what it was maybe when, when Ollie played. Uh, yeah. And I think Ollie's very good at understanding young players because I think he, he looks at it like a father. He's, he's, got, he's got a son and a daughter, similar age to kind of likes of Marcus Rashford or Scott McTominay. So I, I think that gives him a good empathy and understanding of how it works. And I think he understands social media. The rest of them I'm, I'm not so sure about. I, I think it wouldn't hurt to have someone that some of the players were a little bit scared of. Yeah, that's where I yeah. that's where I see it, and I don't mean bullying and all the sort of things that we've heard from the sort of eighties and nineties. I just mean a, a little bit of fearful respect. Yeah, uh, and I don't see any of those characters, Mike Phelan, Kieran McKenna, or, or Michael Carrick, in doing doing that with a with, with a player, really scaring them if they needed to. Yeah, um, perhaps football's changed, and perhaps um, it doesn't need that. I, w- I will say though that Ollie brought in a guy called Martin Pert. Um, early in this season, just right. after the preseason, oh, yeah. um, he his, his backgrounds he played. He coached with Vancouver Whitecaps, the international stuff. Um, had done some stuff in this country. Um, his strength and conditioning is his thing. Right. And I don't think it's any surprise that Manchester United are lasting games better than they were. So he's had an effect. You think? I think so. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's maybe I'm doing his PR, but no, um, no, it makes sense. You know, yeah. I, I, what I was really pleased about in both the Manchester City game and the Spurs game is that you know United hung on. Yeah. And, 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 they, and they weren't teetering on the brink, but there wasn't a sense like there was against Liverpool, where when Liverpool scored. If they'd been in the five or ten minutes, then I think they would have scored no, two or three I more. Thought, yeah, I was feeling you know, that sort of thing. There was a real that. strength to what United did yeah. at the Old Trafford and also at the Etihad, and I think that that's one thing that that is positive about it. That's a good, yeah, that's a good. You know, point. but I'm with you on that. I, I just don't know whether at the moment the structure allows another person to come in. Right, because it's just something I've thought about a little while, and I think you know, obviously you're thinking about it as well. But but I think Oli has has moments where he can be properly scary. Don't worry about that if he needs to be. Yeah, well, you know, you know. he survived those Norwegian winners. You're not exactly uh, <laughs> but, you know, he, soft. He, 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 he treats everything in front of the cameras, as I say, very sort of even-handedly. But I think if he needs to go, yeah. there are gears there. Don't worry about it. I've heard stories like that. Yeah, that it can be uh, can be a tough knot. Um, just finally, this this is sort of dying down a little bit, but I'll ask it anyway. The director of football at United, we, we sort of it comes up in conversation. Every now and again, we have that sort of frenzy over the summer. Is it going to be, you <laughs> yeah. know, I think Darren Fletcher and Patrice Evan, Rio Ferdinand, people are. Do you see that ever happening at United anytime soon? It's uh, funny, it's, it's one thing I really believe in. Um, there's a sporting direct, there's two sporting director courses in, in Manchester. There's one that um, run by sort of friends of mine. So I, um, I kind of support that because I think as a, a fundamental in football, I think it's a really good idea yeah. to have this kind of glue between the boardroom and the first team or the yeah. manager in the boardroom. The problem being, a sporting director in the sense that works perhaps at Everton with Marcel Brands isn't, isn't what Manchester United are offering. No. You know, they're not offering this all, all seeing, all doing head of transfers autonomous chap that kind of stays there no matter what. What I think they're offering is a place on a kind of almost a transfer committee much like Liverpool's. Right. You know, so if, you, if you're someone like Edwin van der Sar who's obviously doing very well for himself at Ajax, I'm sure he'd love to come back to Manchester United in an all powerful position, but I don't think that's the position that's being offered. So that's why I don't think it's being filled. Right, no, you know, okay. I, th- I think the argument kind of is: uh, Do you want to be part of a kind of three or four man team that works out how uh, player progression is working, works out transfers, works out how the production line goes from the academy? Well, no, no, I, I want to be a proper sporting director, um, director of football that, that has complete power at a football club. And I, I just don't think that United are offering that that role. Partly because I think there are people at the club at the moment who still want to be involved in those in those things. Would one of them be Mr. Woodward? I think I think, he, I think he enjoys it. I don't, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'd, it's it's hard. I, th- I, th- I think there's there's more than just him. I think there's people below him who who are who he, who he listens to. I think who are um, part of the mix as well. Yeah. But I think the problem being, as I say, any sporting director kind of doing a sporting director's pure job somewhere else 
or look at what's being offered at Manchester United and think, well, that's not really what my, my job it's should like a entail. Watered down version, or you know, sort of. I mean, these version. these are really important people who, as I say, are the glue, and they they stay as the kind of fabric of the club. So managers come and go, but the sporting director stays. Right. And I, and I don't think that's what what's on offer. So, I, and I'm not certain it's if if you bring it in as a fudge. That it's really what what's needed. No, from what yeah. you describe, the way you're describing it there, and from what we've gathered as well, yeah, it doesn't sound like that's what's needed it's hard, at all. Though, because United really. fans have kind of clung onto it, thinking this will save us being a sporting director. And it just to me personally, it just seems a bit muddled. Because listen, I love Darren Fletcher. When I'm, you know, I watched Darren Fletcher come through the academy and, and, and sort of whether the storm of criticism he got in the days and become a really <laughs> important player for Manchester United. But I don't see how why Darren Fletcher. Is, would be the director of football at Manchester United. That's not a criticism of him. I just think, has he got contacts in football? Has he done this before? No, not necessarily. Not the, perhaps the level you, you'd want. Again, Patrice Ever. Everyone loves Patrice Ever. <laughs> I love Patrice Ever. But why him? You know, why why Rio? What's the thinking behind that? It just it doesn't make a lot of sense to me in terms of the, what that role should be and why you, you're necessarily going for these types of players. Yeah, I, mean, I think what, you, what you've underlined there and I think the problem is that what Manchester United are looking for is someone who understands the fabric of the club and I, I don't necessarily think that's what the club requires at the moment I think they need someone who understands the transfer market and understands how data works and all those sort of things and can tie everything together and certainly none of those guys that you've talked about there have that as part of their makeup I mean they were all brilliant footballers who won tons of stuff with Manchester United but they're not kind of keen anal- analytical minds and it sort of goes back to thinking you know in the dressing room already we've got <laughs> players, ex-players that won loads at United that know what United inside out does that necessarily what we need? That, that's right. I, I well. think what you want is people who are good at what they do in each position. Yeah, you know, and I, and I think at the moment Manchester United are, are trying to restructure everything. You know, I think it's, there's not that you know that they've, they've got a new academy head who came in in, in 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 the summer, and I think things like that. that there are structural changes going on. I think you know it will take a little bit of time, but I think there is a will to get Manchester United ticking again. You know, there's certainly a, a belief that the recruitment has improved. You'd say the evidence of the, the summer probably belies that. It says, it, it says, yeah, we're getting our recruitment right. You know, but I think again, we need more evidence. We need maybe getting a signing in in, in January from Manchester United, and next summer is really important as well because I think it will take you know two or three windows for us to see a Manchester United under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer that he'll be happy as as his team. And I think that's the other thing as well, to be fair to him, and people might think watching this, I'm being way too fair to him because it's been a difficult year. Um, I think he's only picked his first choice, first team twice. Yeah, people uh, forget that. Yeah, we had I think injuries the, the, and the, the Chelsea missing. game at the start of the season, I think the Wolves game when they when they drew 1-1, yeah. when they, again, should have won that game. Important players missing as well. Yeah. Martial and Pogba, arguably two most talented I, I, players. I think so. I mean, I know it's yeah. making a case for that, and, and, and you should say, well, Manchester United players should be able to perform well and it shouldn't matter but again I think it shows how bad the recruitment's been that when those key players are missing it has left such gaps but you know the other side of that is you've seen young players come through and given their chance and it's funny you know he went for it against Colchester and not having young players but if he put loads of young players in people wouldn't have been that surprised because they've seen enough of them this season it's less of a gamble yeah you know so there there is progress being made people you know a, a year report are things moving in a positive direction yes they are what, what will we get from Manchester United in the next year? No one knows. No. I've got a struggle with what the identity of the football club is. I don't know whether you whether you press, whether you counter-attack. No, I've been saying, we, we were talking about it in pre-season against Spurs, it looked like we're going to be high-press and that's how we're going to do it from now on. And Dan James sort of fits that mould and Marcus, we know what he can do and Anthony Martial and then it sort of went out the window. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, you know, opposition managers will, will say that you're a counter-attacking team yeah. and yet your best performance, I think, under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and I, I, I move... Paris out of the way because I think it was one of those bizarre nights where you were going to go through whatever happened. Yeah, I think it's the Man City game a couple of weeks ago, and you just threw everything you could have. Yeah, it wasn't like a, a press or a counter attack. It was just bang, have some of that. You know, and if it'd been four or five nil at half time, no one would have battered an eyelid. Bearing in mind the things that Marcus Rashford was doing, and that was almost a traditional Manchester United. Forget about the opposition. We're going to play like we want to play. <sighs> I'd love to see that more often to be honest with you I think there are some bright things yeah. to cling to but but equally I think things are that brittle and fragile that it, two bad games and suddenly we're back in a bit of a mess just finally do you think Oli will be managing Manchester United next season I, hope I know so. there's a lot of ifs and buts and, do you know, you know I, I, I genuinely hope so and that's not because I like him and because I've known him a long time yeah. um, but if he is manager this time next year or even next season then it, it means things have gone in the right direction yeah <laughs> I would hope so you know what I don't want to see is the end of the season Manchester United not getting near winning a trophy because I think you've got a real chance in the in the Carabao Cup 
Yeah. Uh, and Jose's proved what, what what an important trophy that can be because I think no, but you laugh, but I think no, no, it, 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 it makes laugh when you talk about Jose and those shows. But you're right because he does it. It's yeah. silverware, and it, and it yeah. just gets the club going a little bit. And I think yeah. you know you'll know, and you said to me before that playing against Man City shouldn't give you any fears because you no. know that they'll lift themselves. Similar I'm more confident against City than I am against against Watford. This I am. Weekend. And that sounds crackers. I, said, I think and, that's got yeah. draw written all over it. I no, hope I not. But blimey. Um, and then you, you know right. Europa League. Uh, you know United have coasted through that. Uh, and done it the right way and then suddenly blimey in the Premier League you're, you're four points off fourth so it's not too bad when you look at it like that you're and, I know, the and, 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 and I guess people watching will think oh he's putting a gloss on this no but that you know it that could, is have, it could have been at. a lot worse as I yeah. say you know, look at half time at Sheffield United and suddenly the whole thing's falling apart and also you know went to Chelsea in the Cup as well I know Chelsea rested a few players yeah. it's not an easy game <laughs> to go to so it's not all been plain sailing there you know, I think there's only Europa you look at and think there's no real excuses there. You had to go through that group. But no, you're right. I think there's there's positives there and hopefully yeah. we'll get a, a Christmas present and a winner at Vicarage Road. I, I just think the hard thing is you just don't know when the bumps are coming at the moment. You know, whether mm. the bump will be at Watford or whether, you know, it'll be at Burnley, uh, even Newcastle on Boxing Day. You want to see all those games should have win, 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 win. Yeah. And I said to Ollie this morning, is that the biggest challenge going into a new year? That Manchester United start winning games but that by reputation, by history and even by the ability of your players you should expect to win and I think he, he agrees that it is but he also said look there's a lot of youth there you're still going to get some unpredictability I think you know to come back to your original question will he be in charge I think if some of that unpredictability is gone then yes if you get top, top four definitely um, but you'd have to say again the jury's still out in a sense you don't know what the next year is going to te- entail you can't on the evidence of the last year it's the maddest year I've known as United fan honestly I don't think, that, that I don't think he's ever he, I've well, never seen anything like uh, it that was my first opening question to him to, this morning have you ever known a year like it and he had to admit he hadn't no you know he's taken his dream job a job he never, he never thought always hoped he'd get but never thought perhaps he'd get and, and it goes brilliantly and suddenly it becomes the nightmare job <laughs> I know it's it's just yeah it so is. you can't say it with any, any clear clarity or any fact what's going to happen but you have to say at the moment it doesn't look as though he's going anywhere No, well I hope you're right because like you say if he's not going anywhere it means he's been a success and I think as a United fan Ole at the wheel if I dare say that out loud um, managing us to success would be a dream come true because you know he's obviously revered for what he did as a player James I appreciate you coming and chatting to us I know you're not well you've got a cold you've not got my cold because that would be the worst thing that. yeah listen it's been going around our house so I, I think I'm immune at the minute um, working over Christmas you're going to be there are you going to be there as well in, yeah I think at Newcastle and Burnley yeah. um, so that, that'll that be interesting and then will, will we see you outside Carrington on Jan- January transfer oh, it, w- it will be <laughs> and I just think oh. I mean, it'd be great to be excited but sometimes yeah. it's a case of standing out there and all you do is, is you're cold knowing nothing's happening I, know, I don't envy you sometimes when I see you like like standing there and there's not really a lot if going on if you've got something to say if Berbatov's you know, behind you signing it's great but that's, yeah. that's what the job entails yeah. you know, if you're telling people news it's the best job in the world yeah. if, if you've got nothing to say and all it is is cold it's the longest day on earth and what people don't know and there's a little secret is most of the time the camera crews change halfway through the day so you'll do I don't know um, a 16, 18 hour shift or even 20 hours and the worst moment is when the camera crew changes because they've done their 8 hours and it's like hi I'm, I'm here for the second bit and right, start. and I've still got another eight, nine hours. See, no, it's, not, so. it's not as glamorous as you think. Um, it's still a, fun, though. Yeah, don't worry. exactly. James, thanks again. Um, yeah, you can see James Cooper, obviously, on Sky Sports. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment on the video as well. This has been Full Time Devils. Thanks for watching.